Yeah, we got a caller. Yeah, we have we have our guest on the line. We have Alan Stewart from the Hall of Heroes Superhero Museum in Indiana. Alan, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, guys. How you doing? We're, We're awesome. good, Alan. Hey, welcome. So thank you so much for calling in, Alan. And uh, hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. So I'm gonna turn it over to my partner Bill because he's the one that first uh, you know found uh, you and your museum. So I'm gonna let him uh, start off this little. Uh, this combo cool. here. Hey, Alan, it's Bill. How are you, man? Hey, I'm doing well, Bill. How you doing? Doing well. Thanks for uh, for joining us today on this Sunday. So, you know, I um, you know, want to preface our uh, our guests on uh, you know how I came about um, finding the uh, uh, the museum that that you run, and it's it's really cool. Um, I first saw you on um, the uh, Fast and Loud uh, show on um, on uh, the Velocity Network, and um, the uh you know the episode introduced uh um you know you and the uh and the museum that you run and it was uh um, you know it was cool because you were you first off you you were dealing with a uh, piece of memorabilia that um you know that is very familiar to us because we're big marvel fans here and uh it was the Shelby uh, Cobra that was in the first Iron Man movie uh with uh, Robert Downey Jr and from that point, um, you know, you you got the car for your collection, and uh, you know, you guys were highlighted on that show. Um, you know, so that was really the the you know the first time that we got uh, introduced to um, to the museum that you run, and uh, you know, we're really excited to have you on the show today because as uh, you know, as big uh, adult nerds here, we got to really see a lot of cool stuff that that you have in the museum there. And, um, you know, just want to, you know, talk to you today and, um, you know, tell us first off, you know, how did you, how did you get into, uh, you know, into this business basically? How did you get into, um, you know, starting a museum? It's, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of just, you know, like everybody else. I grew up with the stuff, you know, I grew up in the seventies, you know, super friends, uh, reruns of the Batman from uh, 1966. You know, I didn't see it in 66. I was born in 70. So, like around 1975, you know, I'm seeing it when it's re airing after school. Um, just, you know, started with that. My dad started getting me comics when I, you know, was like seven, eight years old. And just, uh, I just kind of didn't grow up and became addicted to it. And there's worse things you can get addicted to. But <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, I've been collecting for almost 40 years. And in that time, I've just amassed the largest superhero memorabilia collection in the world. And got into the industry in the 90s as a uh, publisher, um, comic book writer. I'm actually now one of the foremost comic book historians. I do a lot of the history and celebrity panels at a lot of the, uh, the Comic-Cons across the country. And just decided 10 years ago, actually 11 years ago, um, to build a two-story replica of the Hall of Justice in my backyard to kind of house the collection. And it was just started as a, a little local museum. Yeah. And then Stan Lee comes, in, you know, five years ago and uh, films his super fan show at my museum. That's awesome. um, and you mentioned Fast and Loud last year. That was actually the fifth national TV show. Uh, that has filmed here at our museum, um, but it's amazing. You know, it's, it's only about three thousand square feet, but we've got over sixty thousand comic books, over a hundred pieces of original animation and comic book art, over ten thousand toys. Uh, of course, the uh, the Iron Man Cobra was donated to us very generously by Richard Rawlings. Um, and then uh, one thing that we just acquired, a lot of folks don't know about, we just also picked up a second Marvel movie vehicle, uh, Nicholas Cage's Ghost Rider motorcycle from the first film we knew. Oh wow! Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> do you have a uh, Do you have a lot of Nick Cage uh, uh, memorabilia? You know, I feel like uh, that that's a guy right now that's um, you know, kind of you know has this uh, little overzealous uh, rap right now. And <laughs> is there uh, any demand for Nicholas Cage uh, memorabilia? You know, the, the Ghost Rider motorcycle, it, it is pretty badass. Yeah. <laughs> so he is. Yeah. I mean, it's the actual hell cycle itself. 
Um, and what we do is we go around to uh, conventions and, and we take both Marvel movie vehicles. We also own uh, Chris Evans' uh, screen use Captain America shield from the first film. It's autographed by the entire cast. Wow. And uh, we kind of take the, the Marvel movie props and do kind of like a Marvel movie prop tour where it's kind of like the celebrities. You know, you pay for photos with the stuff. We kind of do that for donations for our museum because, uh, you know, it started out with my personal collection, but now we are a uh, – a nonprofit organization with a board of directors. I mean, we we just grown so much over the years, and now we are the uh, premier place. We're preserving the comic book history because mm. uh, no one else is doing that. So that's how we have our nonprofit status: is the educational programs we do, the preservation programs that we do. And right now, we're trying to raise two hundred thousand dollars to move to a larger location because we don't have room to display the Marvel movie vehicles and, and a lot of things in our collection. We just we're out of room. Yeah, I, I saw that that you uh, that you guys are a nonprofit. And that's really great that you, you know, you've took this culture and you, you, you know, you're running with it in, uh, you know, in an educational aspect because, you know, let's face it, uh, you know, the kids growing up nowadays, you know, they're all attached to their phones and stuff like that. So, you know, mm-hmm. taking us back to when we were kids, picking up a comic book, reading it and, uh, you know, and having that, you know, that educational piece to it is definitely important. So, you know, I'm glad to see that you guys are um you know taking a you know a, a very holistic approach to you know bringing you know comic books and bringing the the culture um you know in your community there that's a you know that's an awesome thing to be doing um you know in addition to just having fun um now d- did you say earlier that you guys have the largest collection um in regards to um memorabilia is that how you we 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 do yeah we have uh well at least it's not been disputed in 10 years uh we have the largest superhero memorabilia collection okay. in the world um you know of course consists of the costumes the props the toys the comics um we probably have like the third largest comic book collection in the world of uh, between 60 and 65,000 comic books wow. um but yeah it's just kind of going back to you know some of the stuff that, you know, our nonprofit stuff, the educational stuff, you know, we kind of show teachers how to use comic books in the classroom to teach history or science or literature or art or music. I mean, you can you can use these superhero themes, but the big thing is we like to use superheroes as positive role models. You know, we get yeah. cosplayers that volunteer for us, and we go out to a lot of charity events uh, for a lot of youth organizations like CAPS, which is the Child Abuse Preventive Services, uh, the local chapter here. Two years ago, we helped them put together like a superhero 5K run uh, that's getting ready to start its third year this spring. Um, and that they raised, I think last year we raised thirty five thousand dollars for that organization, wow, uh, helping awesome. them out with that. And just you know, we work the Boys and Girls Club. You know, we work with schools. We work with a lot of great organizations. That's awesome. Um, now it, I, I saw some pictures on on um, on the Facebook. Uh, is that you dressed up as Captain America? That that is me. In fact, uh, you know, I actually did something really out of the box I've never done before. I do a lot of Captain America cosplay. I also do Joker too. I do it as uh, Beetlejuice. Okay. Uh, we do a super villain <laughs> King Haunted House here every October because Halloween's like Christmas for me. I love Halloween. Oh yeah, so do so we. So we change like all the lights to uh, black lights, and we bring you know cosplayers from Chicago and Indy and Grand Rapids, and we do a super villain King Haunted House, which is it's just amazing. That's uh, cool. Um. But the Captain America thing uh, for Election Day in November, uh, it was really big in the news that I showed up at the polls and actually <laughs> cast my vote as Captain America because because it was so controversial this year. I mean, just you know all the riots and everything else. And and I tell you, I'm a veteran, and I believe very strongly in you know the you know soldiers, you know what we fought for, right. you know my fellow you know veterans have fought for you know the right to vote. And probably for the first time ever, I was I was concerned to not vote in this election. In fact, I was not going to do it up until the morning of. And I was at the gym working out, and I come home, and I'm like, you know what? I, you know, everybody's so negative about the election. I wanted to do something positive. Yeah. So, you know, took a shower. You know, I threw on my Captain America uniform, and I went to the polls, and I called all the news stations, and and they were covering it and putting it out there, and it went all over line. But you know. I actually went and cast my vote actually as Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, we we saw the the costume that you have there. I mean, um, is that is that a um, is that one from one of the movies? Because that looks pretty pretty damn authentic. 
It's it, it is. It's not from the movies though. Um, I had it made uh, overseas. Oh, okay. Um, but they, you know, and they, I, you know, they do some great costumes. Yeah. Over there, and you know, they don't have to deal with the licensing stuff. I guess maybe that's the reason. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but I mean, they do some great costumes, and I've done different bits of my costumes. I had the um, the, the, the trousers, the belt, and the top. Uh, with the actual real metal star on it, that was uh, done overseas. But I didn't like the gloves and the boots or the helmet that came with it. So then I customized those things on my own. I ordered like a separate helmet that was a replica of the uh, most recent, the Civil War. And it's it's like a a, a nice military, uh, you know, hard plastic, oh, well, kind of hard rubber uh, helmet. And it looks really good. And then I actually decided instead of the you know the crappy boot covers they sent the costume was great but the the extra the attachments were were kind of cheap and I actually wear my actual uh, military boots that I wore in the army 25 years ago so I wear my actual military boots with it. Ah, that's cool. Yeah, Alan, what would you say is your personal favorite uh, piece of memorabilia that you guys have in the museum? Uh, Boy, that's tough. I mean, there's so many great pieces. Um, I, I'll tell you a couple of my favorites because I can't, I can't just go with one. But, but maybe my ultimate favorite is probably going to be Adam West's personal Batman costume. Wow, how Ooh. about that? Because, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, we, I grew up with that. Um, and the costume that we have, it's, it was his personal one he wore throughout the 70s and 80s at public events, <laughs> not from the show. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Um, the boots are from the show. The, the boots and the costume we have are from the show, but the rest of it, you know, he he wore it later. But this was like the, you know, the one. And there's there's a private, uh, yeah, there's a private collector that has the only existing complete one from the show, and then there's the one we have. And as far as I know, that's it. Okay, Alan. Uh, being that you got uh, the original uh, Batman costume, you know, we uh, we just posted. Um, a little article that uh, came up this past week on on the Cinescape page, um, and it was about um, Christopher Reeves' uh, Superman uh, costume and um, uh, Michael Keaton's um, Batman uh, Returns uh, costume um, that were going up for auction. Now, uh, when you uh, procure you know items for the collection, do you do? Things like this, like, uh, do you go to auctions and and have to bid on stuff, or or is everything you know part of a donation? We we've had a mix of everything, um, like the Iron Man Cobra. Uh, you know, Richard Robbins donated that to us. Um, the Ghost Rider motorcycle, and and actually last July there's the big Hollywood auction that happens in July. It's usually about a three day auction. Uh, we purchased three pieces at that auction. That's where we got the Ghost Rider motorcycle. Okay. Uh, we also got Ryan Reynolds' screen used Green Lantern ring at that auction. And then we purchased uh, from the third Spider-Man movie, where the Sandman, where he's three stories tall, he's absorbing cars and trucks and buildings and, and things. Hmm. Uh, we purchased the three-foot mo clay model that they used to film that scene. Everything's to scale. There's like a big dump truck in the base of it and people yeah. and, and everything else. So it's really cool. We're going to, when we move to the larger location, we're going to put that like in a glass dome, kind of show how they do some of the special effects and things at Marvel Films. Nice. What was the uh, actual first thing that you guys did get into the museum? Um, well, you know, there was quite a bit of a collection when the museum opened 10 years ago that I had already been collecting for like 25 years previous to that. Or are you talking about as a kid, what was the first thing I got? No, I mean like uh, from a movie set. The first, the first movie piece that I got was actually before the museum opened, and this was probably 15 to 20 years ago. I had the opportunity, and I acquired um, – do you remember Grace and Erkin here with William Cat? Yeah. Okay, his costume. Okay. How about that? Yeah. And funny story about that. I bought that, and it was right around Halloween. And so every year, you know, I've always thrown a big Halloween party, and I do a different superhero, and I don't tell anybody who I'm going to be. It's like, you know, if you want to find out, you get to come to the party. So that year, I had just got the costume about three weeks before, and I put this on, and I go get like a curly blonde wig, and I do grace more I'm wearing the actual suit for, for a Halloween party. And then, of course, then I've been drinking a little bit and decided to try a stunt <laughs> in the costume. Uh-oh, what'd you do? Uh-oh, what'd you do? 
Okay, so what I did is is I do I, I do a flip over a bonfire off of a trampoline wearing <laughs> what one of only two of these that exist. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Yeah, a little, a little crazy. I'm a little older and wiser now, but I, I was in my 20s then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, you're, yeah, you're, in, was, you're in short. That was my first Hollywood memorabilia piece, and I almost burn in and knee up together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Alan, what is something that you don't currently have that you would want to get in, like uh, like your holy grail of uh, memorabilia pieces? Oh, you mean movie memorabilia or comic book memorabilia? Either or. Comic book, I mean, yeah, I'd love to have an Action 1 or Detective 27 or Marvel Comics one. We have a Captain America number one. That's the rarest book in our collection. Oh, wow. um, we, we just lost out yesterday on getting a Sensation number one, you know, Wonder Woman's first full appearance. Yeah. Um, so we kind of lost out on that yesterday, unfortunately. We're hoping maybe the guy will come back to the table and, uh, and we can acquire that for the museum. Um, movie memorabilia, boy, I would, uh, you know, I tell you, you know, if you would have asked me like five years ago, I would have said an Adam West Batman costume, but I have that now. So I've got to, you know, um, you know, the Michael Keaton Batman costume, that's kind of a big deal to me. I really like that. Uh, a Christopher Reeve Superman costume would, would be amazing. Uh, one of Chris Hemsworth's Thor hammers or mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man suits. You know, there, there are several pieces that, yeah, we would just love to have any of those pieces. Nice. Wow. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's anybody in this room that's turned yeah, down that. Yeah, wouldn't we all? I, like, I, think I we would wear them to work every it's just day. Just Walmart yeah. get one, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Alan. We, um, you know, we here at the Cinescape, like, like we said, you know, we're big Marvel movie lovers. Uh, you know, just comic book uh, genre in general. Um, you know, we got a lot of movies coming out this year, and you know, it sounds like you're you're a big film guy yourself. What um? What? I, I do. I go see everything the opening weekend. I do uh, actually a lot of movie reviews for you know a lot of the local media. Ah, that's awesome. Out. Yeah, we um. Hold on, before before you ask him the question, are you more of a DC fan or a Marvel fan, or are you kind of split in the middle? I'm actually both. You know, and and I'm kind of one of those. You know, people are like, oh, you know, I hate DC or I hate Marvel. It's like, you know, why can't you like them both? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. Now, I mean, we uh we here, you know, we have. A little ritual that we do. We go out um, to the new releases. You know, they usually come out on um, on uh, Thursdays, sometimes even Wednesdays uh, now. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, we uh, it's been a tradition that we've been doing for years now. So we go out to the early show, and we you know we see the Marvel movies. Um, what first? Or Bill falls asleep during the DC movie. Yeah, I fall asleep during the <laughs> DC movie. So uh, my you know I don't understand why everybody rags on the DC movies so bad. You know, I don't think they're that bad. Uh, I, they're not. Uh, that's the thing. I, I mean, I, I Suicide fe- Squad was Suicide Squad. I, <laughs> I whoa, whoa, whoa. Suicide Squad was good. Uh, I thought I'd like Suicide Squad. You like Ninja Turtles? You I idiot. did. I, I'll go watch it again. <laughs> I'll get a I'm full. I'm not a Ninja Turtle guy. <laughs> I, I'll go. I'll go buy a Ninja Turtle costume. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's our uh, producer, Mike. He uh, he he is uh, swearing that that the new Ninja Turtles genre is. Uh, is worth worth viewing. Other but. than other than okay. the other than the horrible shredder, I the just whole thing's hard. I don't like the shredder, but I like the turtles. Stop it! <laughs> yeah, and I didn't see that. I didn't go. I didn't go see the Ninja Turtles movie. I guess I don't consider them superheroes. So uh, so so, Alan, you wouldn't consider getting one of the old uh, Ninja Turtle uh, costumes from the nineties oh. to, to just you know maybe stick in the corner uh, <laughs> next to you know, Adam West? I, no, I, I would because I understand just because I don't like it. Yeah. You know, I'm not a big fan that other people aren't. Yeah. So you know, obviously, you know, we think of the museum, we think of everybody in general. So no, we would certainly have something like that if it you know somebody wanted to donate it or yeah. or team you know team available at the right price. Right. Mm-hmm. And I mean, something like that, I'm just thinking would be cool because. You know that was uh, a live action Ninja Turtles movie that you know these actors wore. Uh, you so know, what, you're these, getting CGI now. Okay, these body no. suits, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. they were no, Jim no, Henson. No, no, we definitely would. Yeah, no, if we had the opportunity, we certainly would. Yeah. There that, you go. There you go. And and Sean, you said those were Jim Henson suits. Yeah. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, they were. That, yeah, I didn't know that. And they um, still look better than what uh, what we're getting now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just goes to show, you know, not everything should should be CGI, but um. Uh, circling back, Alan, um, you know, I, I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, what, what has been your favorite Marvel movie, uh, to date and what Marvel movie are you most excited for, 
um, in 2017? It's a tie for me between the two. My two favorite Marvel movies is between Avengers. Okay. The first one. Yeah, that's a great one. And Captain America: First Avenger. Okay. We. Have... I'm, I'm a big. I'm a big World War II history buff. Okay. So I love that that was so set. You know, is it, it was you know it was a time period piece. Right. And I thought that they did it so well. Um. And you know, and I'm a big lover of World War II, the early Captain America stuff. I mean, you know. I've, I filmed with Stan Lee, Alan Bellman. You know, a lot of folks know him, you know, because, you know, him and Stan are the last living Captain America artist, artist and writer from the, the Golden Age yeah. era of comic books. Um, you know, Alan Bellman, I, I love very dearly, like he's my own grandfather. And so I'm very, you know, that that generation really, you know, resonates with me because yeah. I do a lot of the comics in World War II panels and a lot of the comic cons. That's my favorite period in history. Yeah, I agree. That movie, uh, it, it was done very, very well with, um, you know, with tying up those uh, loose ends of World War II and, and Cap's mm-hmm. uh, backdrop story there. Um, so what uh, what movie are you looking forward to from Marvel uh, this year? This year, you know, I really I like the new Spider Man. Yeah, you know the yeah the the, the new kids playing Spider Man is is great and it kind of reminds me of my son my my youngest uh, is about that age he's seventeen and he cosplays Spider Man so he kind of reminds me of the the new Spider Man um, but when we were at Chicago Con he did a little bit of a unique cosplay he did a Jedi Spider Man he had the oh, wow. Spider Man nice. costume with the robes and the custom lightsaber and. Uh, he, he was pretty popular. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome because I actually brought in my uh, Star Wars effects lightsaber that I just bought last week. And uh, um, if you watch the recap video of, of the today's show, I was uh, hacking things up in the studio here yeah, with my uh, a mess. with my lightsaber. <laughs> I'm going to tu- I'm gonna, you know I'm going to turn it on real quick and you can see if you can hear it. Uh, yep, I can hear <laughs> yeah. it. Don't, don't break your new toy. Yeah. I know. So. <laughs> We've been uh, we've been having fun with that in the studio today, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, do you, Alan, do you ever just go into your museum and look around and realize you've I do. just just like just look around and smile and realize you've got everything as like as a child, everybody wants a room like that, and now you I have do. it. You I, do? I so do that. I I kind of I walk around sometimes. You know, so we just put in brand new display cases upstairs. Because uh, we're doing a lot of that before, you know, before we, you know, while we're trying to raise the money to move next year or this year, and I do do that. I go in there like before we open or like when I close, and I and I do get like I get very nostalgic, yeah. and I'll walk through it and I'll be like, you know, if my 14 year old self could see <laughs> exactly this. He'd, He'd probably not think about girls. <laughs> <laughs> you, Maybe I don't want to go that far, but I'm just saying it would just it would be like totally mind blowing to my 14 year old self. And, and, and now, like and now, and what? You know? And now, and what would be your most you know explicit response? And 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 mind you, you this this show is unfiltered, and you can curse. So so like to <laughs> okay, to, okay, pig, yeah, to piggyback sometimes. <laughs> yeah, to piggyback that thought, like Mike just said, you walk into you know your your. Uh, you know, your museum and you're, you know, you flick the switch on, you're all by yourself and you see all this cool shit on your walls and you like, you know, what what's just going through your thought process right at that point, you know, completely, uh, you know, unfiltered. You know, I'm just, you know, I, I like, you know, it's a big sense of pride, Yeah. you know, because it is my life's work. I've dedicated my life to preserving the history, you know, and these things that we have. And, you know, when people come through, you know, they're like, you know, he, you know, we've seen you on Toy Hunter, we've seen you on Salem Superfans or Fast Night. You know, people come, you know, they, and they come here, and this thing's sitting in my backyard. It's yeah. kind of nuts. You know, <laughs> and we bring in more tourism than any museum in Elkhart County with this thing sitting in my backyard. It's kind of nuts. That's awesome. And the people come in, and they, they appreciate, you know, that I'm sharing it, I'm showcasing it to people, that, you know, I'm sharing, you know, that... People really enjoy that. So, I mean, I enjoy talking to the fans when they come in. In fact, that's kind of what happened. I was about five minutes late calling you guys when you texted me because there, you know, there's a big family of like eight that, you know, we're sitting, me and the dad were talking about, you know, 
you know, Linda Carter Wonder Woman, she spun around and uh, bam, you know, there she wasn't in, in her uh, in her uh, her hot uh, bathing suit costume there, and <laughs> we were just, you know, because he was about my age, you know, he's mid late forties, and we were just kind of being very nostalgic about that. And I kind of get like that with a lot of people that come through. Yeah, that's all. Not a lot of people get to live their dream and live doing something like that, and and being able to like talk about it all the time with like-minded people yeah and i was looking at i google image the uh the museum and i saw a lot of you with a huge smile on your face i'm like man that's a that's just an awesome thing to see somebody who's doing what they loved and and doing it well and and getting the recognition that you get it's it's very cool it's very awesome to see very uh it, it very is. inspiring I, mean, I couldn't be happier you know obviously you know uh mo- most of the stuff has been self-funded over the years you know we we don't get a lot of uh you know, donations and things like that, you know, as much as we would like to, because we're just totally swamped now. We just really got to raise money to to move. Uh, in fact, we're working on a big project right now. We're actually doing our first annual Hall of Heroes Con. It's coming up March 11th and 12th. Oh, nice. And I don't know cool. if you saw that. You know, I mean, I've worked with several cons over the years, you know, C2E2 and, and Wizard World and uh, Indiana Con and Grand Rapids, and I do panels and, and work with, you know, those guys. I've been involved in cons for over 20 years. Um but then I was approached by the city of Elkhart and said, hey, you know, you're going to museum. We'd like to do a con. The new mayor that came in last year, uh, his, his son is actually one of the marketing guys at uh, San Diego Con. And he's like, hey, you know, I want to start con here in Elkhart. Everybody says you're going to talk to. What do we need to do to make it happen? I'm like, well, we just we just start planning it out. And that started about a year ago. And we're bringing in uh, we're bringing in Dean Kane. We're bringing in Red Brown, the Captain America actor from the 1980s movies. Um we're bringing in Chris Brewster, who is uh, Chris Evans' stunt double for the Captain America films. Oh, he also stunt doubles for Charlie Cox and Daredevil. He's uh, he and I are going to do a uh, fight choreography scene on stage on Sunday. So that's something that's never been done at cons, you know, a Marvel stunt show. Which yeah, going to be just off the hook. And we're doing a thing called Animation Alley. We're bringing in Tom Cook from Hanna Barbera that worked on Super Friends, Flintstones, Jetsons, Scooby Doo, The Smurfs. Thunder the Barbarian, He Man, She Ra. You know, he works on King of the Hill now. You know, we're bringing him in, uh, bringing in one of his buddies who did the first two seasons of The Simpsons. His other buddy that's coming with him uh, worked at uh, Disney, worked on Milan, um, Tarzan, the TV series on Disney. Um, what else did he do? Yeah, Milan, uh, Beauty and the Beast, uh, Aladdin. You know, he worked on all those big films. Uh, we'll bring in one of the animators from uh, Jimmy Neutron. Uh, so we're just going to do this big thing called Animation Alley, and we're going to have like five you know, world-class animators right there for people to see and meet. And uh, we're bringing in Alan Bellman, who I mentioned earlier, that uh, you know, Marvel Films is doing a documentary on him. The guy's 92 years old, can still draw Captain America. It's just amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. We'll, so, I mean, yeah, uh, we yeah, just we'll got be... some great uh, Mystery Science Theater. You guys familiar with that? Yeah. yeah. Big time. Okay, well, the relaunch is coming in March. They're actually doing a live show on uh, stage for our con. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you... I mean, that's you. People are pretty excited. We just announced that on Tuesday that Mystery Science Theater is, is doing a live show at our con. Yeah, wow, those awesome. guys so are just, hilarious. I wanted to do things that have never, that I've not seen at other cons in the 20 years I've been doing this, just to make it really unique to, to our con. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to make sure that we share out all that information for that con on. Yeah, our yeah, you know, yeah, we've got the the website, the Facebook site for the Holly Heroes Comic Con is up. Uh, yeah, if you could uh, please uh, be greatly appreciative of that. Yeah, definitely, and I think we really need to make it a point to venture out. We got to go out there yeah, to see. We the gotta, museum. Yeah. Oh, absolutely! Because that, it sounds. Yeah, you know, we've like been trying to get comic dream. book men out here to film. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That'd be really well, cool. Well, you know, the funny thing is, we've been on the docket since season one for wow. them to come out here and film an episode. It just hasn't happened yet. We're in season six now. Oh, yeah. I, I watched that show. I love that show. And, and seeing oh, I know, you, yeah. What, I, you know, one of the producers from, like, the first season, yeah. you know, stopped here on his way to Hawaii to start doing some film. And he stopped by. And he goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, I had you guys on the list for season one. And, uh, you know, oh. just nobody wanted to travel and stuff. Oh, and uh it would definitely and then, be perfect. You know, and Ming Chen, I saw him in D.C. at Awesome Con. He's like, he goes, yeah. He goes, I've heard the producers talking about that, you know, at some point we're going to come out and film that. I was like, 
come on, Kevin, come on out here. Yeah, you know, let's do Kevin's it. Kevin's a big fan. He, you know, Kevin Smith is a huge fan. You know, he would love, he would love our museum. He would just go nuts with it. You know, we'd have him slide down the bat pond into the bat cave, yeah. and uh, it'd be it'd be a great episode. Yeah, uh, I, I think we need to do a live show from there. <laughs> yeah, I think so. You I, guys should. I'm telling you, it would be it would be awesome. You would know, slide down the bat pole, you know, <laughs> the Batman music. Yeah. Oh my god! Phone and uh, that's it. This is, my, this is my that's my summer vacation. Don't, don't tell Bill he's allowed to slide down the bat pole because <laughs> yeah. then he's not going to do anything but continuously slide down the bat pole. <laughs> you can get a picture on the Ghost Rider motorcycle. Yeah. You know? Oh man. <laughs> Uh, so, Mike, I think what we need to do is yes. take Toxic on the road. Okay, this uh, is Facebook Live video, you, you yes. know, road trip across I'll get everything uh, ready. Across I'll just... state lines. It, it would be a new a new term when you come here. It's going to be nerdasm. Nerdasm, <laughs> yeah, I like nice, that. Nice, nice. Orgasm, nerdasm. There you go. <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, in wrapping up, Alan, we're um, yeah, you know, we're so happy that you know we had the opportunity to talk to you today and that uh, you came on the show. Um, you know, we're definitely gonna. Um, share out all the information that uh, that we got today from you. Um, Sean, did you have any closing remarks? No, nah, just that yeah, we're definitely going to make it a point to get out there and see the, everything yeah, we yeah, have come, going yeah, on. Yeah, come see us. You guys you guys love it. Yeah, that's a, it sounds like a like a play place. I, I, I want to <laughs> go right now. An adult playground. <laughs> Alan, thank you so much for calling in, and we will hey, speak with you again soon. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Soon. Appreciate it. See thanks, yeah. Alan. No problem. All right.